And with that, you know, we want to bid you shalom and the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Um, you know, there's, a t there's some time that we have, we set aside, we call it um, um, spending some time with the captains, or 15 minutes with the captains. And what that goes into is that we want to be able to say, or bring out some things that may be a concern in the body, or bring out some scriptures that's pertaining to a particular subject matter. It could be something like fasting. It could be something like unclean foods. But just 15 minutes is something that we want to touch on. And my segment I'd like to bring out today is just dealing with leadership. Now, for me, I'm a heavy proponent of leadership. If those of you that know me, um, I, I, I'm wholeheartedly, and I say this, and I won't, you won't hear me say this a lot, because I want the actions to work themselves out or prove themselves out. I support my leadership. I support it wholeheartedly. I do. That's been really the, one of the uh, things that have allowed me to continue to grow since I've been here. I've been an agent, I've been an advocate, I've been supporting leadership. I believe in it. I'm a young man that came from a family of 11, I have a very large family. And you have to learn how to go in that family or that number of people you're going to interact with a lot. There's things you're going to do wrong, there's things you're going to do right. And in that number of people, it was, I was able to govern myself or learn how to treat people and learn how not to treat them and learn who to, to follow. There's going to be a hierarchy, all those people in there, good God Almighty. And um, um, my mom, them, you know, like I said, it was, uh, it was a bunch of us, 11 children, 11 children, every bit. And so you have to know your place in that hierarchy. You would. And you would not get out of place because you'll know what your place is. And so that brings me to leadership. It allows me to bring out and hopefully that we'll be able to touch on something that will aid you, support you, and encourage you. But leadership is a must. That's what I'd like to talk about today. Leadership is a must. I want to start with Proverbs 29 and 17. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. What did I give you? I gave you Proverbs 29 and 17? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I just want to get it with you. Read that from the top again. Proverbs mm -hmm. chap chapter 29, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Correct thy son. And when you understand that um, being a part of leadership is, is knowing where you are. And in that, I'm just basically saying, like, I'm kind of trying to feed off the fact that in my family structure, you know, I had to know my place. But read on. Correct thy son, mm -hmm. and he shall give thee rest. If you do what's right, and many of us say, well, you know, I never had much leadership, but we're going to see. We're going to see. Look like you did have some leadership, but we'll talk about that. Read on. Yay. He shall give delight unto thy soul. For what is the purpose of leadership? It should have a purpose. Is God not talking about it? Is there something that we're missing? Let's see what the Bible says. Read on. Where there is no vision? Because if you don't have no leadership, if there's nobody there to guide you, you say, well, I, I went to college. I paid my college tuition myself. Read it from the top again, that verse. Where there is no vision, you still going to need somebody to guide you. That's where we go wrong yet. We don't think that we don't need no help. You know how we use words like I'm grown. You know how you think you don't arrive. You got that job that's paying you 50K plus. You get it. You get it. Truly you do. But you say leadership is not what I need. I'm doing this on my own. So you say. Those are the words that you use. Are we believing that? If that's the case, we would have to aid and support and encourage you and build you up if you had it going on like that. You just still stuck over here in the Esau side, but come on over here where we are. Read that from the top again. Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 29 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So look up for me the word perish. That's the word I want to touch on. That word perish. Where there's no vision, where there's no leadership, the people can or will perish. Let's see what it talks about. Suffer death. Typically in a valid sudden or untimely way. 
That's because we're lacking in leadership. Let's get that. Let's see what the Bible says about that. 14 and 2 of Jeremiah. Hurry up. I don't even think I wrote it down, though. I want to touch on that. Jeremiah, chapter mm -hmm. 14 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Judah mourneth, mm -hmm. and the gates thereof languish. And our people don't have no leadership. Read. They are black unto the ground. Our leaders are not helpful to the nation of Israel. That's why we need leaders. Leadership is a must. We have to have leaders. Read on. And the cry of Jerusalem is and, gone up. And the position or the perishment of our people is going on. You got single mothers out there trying to raise children by themselves. We're perishing. You got brothers out here at 14, 15 years old talking about I got to be a man. We're perishing. We got um, uh, young uh, uh, fathers trying to uh, learn how to be a father and is struggling in his manhood. We got young sisters that are struggling trying to be a, a, a young lady, and it ought not be. They need to be kept at home. Why? Because the mother, because of the family head is being destroyed. And that's happening to our people. We should be crying for leadership. We should ask them, what can I do to help? Some of us don't even know what it's like to have a father because we've been trying to be a young man all our lives. We never had the opportunity to be a son. You know, our people have been robbed in sport. You know, we've been raised by some of our parents. We have, some of us been raised by our grandparents. Our parents didn't even help us. We didn't probably start talking to them when we was 14 or 15. You've been at grandma's house the whole doggone time. But we don't think we need leadership. I say you're sadly mistaken. We have to have an example. And when you give an example, those are the examples that you must follow. And there are examples in the Bible that says that what we should do. We have good examples in the Bible how we should follow. Give me that in Sharak 3 and 1 and 2. Let's see if we all ever had any leadership at all. Let's see if we ever had any. The book of Sirach, chapter 3, and verse, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter, that ye may be safe. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. So, these are your parents. Or this was your grandmother then. They have raised you. <coughs> And you know what? That was your leadership. You weren't complaining then. You was excited then. Asking grandma if she's making one of her favorite pies. You didn't have no problem with leadership then. Asking your mama would she be getting you them tennis shoes this week. You didn't have no problem then. When you was asking your daddy, hey dad, will help me get my driver's license. You didn't have no problem then. But now we come into the truth and now we have leadership. Now we sit now, we don't know I'll use the same one. We think we grown. Now we don't need no leadership. Don't make no sense to me. When I see somebody need, still need tennis shoes and I see somebody need driving license. That's what I see. But we don't think we need leadership. Drop that, get me first. Uh, let's just get to the meat of it. Give me uh, Luke 9 and 22. I stated earlier, I said, you know, I need this leadership. I know how important it is to my soul to help people that have labored in this that pretty much helped me become what I am today. How in the world you not believe in leadership or you don't need that part in your life? Don't make sense. Read what you got. Luke chapter 9 and verse 22. Saying, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. You have people that come before you and they already laid the foundation. You ain't even had to suffer nothing. You over there trying to decide what kind of fringes you're going to put on. You ain't had to do anything. You just got to show up, get you a black bag, and, and, and come into the door and talk about, uh, I like to sit over here. But there's people that labor heavily in this gospel for you. 
gave up much, suffered much for you. And men don't understand the purpose of leadership. It has a great purpose. When you understand that you're called to follow Christ, if you believe in the work that's being done, you'll understand your purpose of leadership or having to follow leadership. You'll know your purpose. There won't be no waffling right there. You won't be struggling with that. You'll know your place. I knew I couldn't go up there and, and, and break rank on my mom now. Tell me, hand me all them bills here. I need to pay them. I'm 10 years old. I couldn't break rank like that. They'd beat me across my back, send me across the room, you know, probably put me out of the house or something. They, they ain't praying. You can't break rank. So how is it now that the water is rising? Now brothers think they can break rank. Now remember, I ain't forgot. Help me get my driving license. Buy me some tennis shoes. I need some lunch money. Are you going to cook that pie today? I ain't forgot. Which verse is this? 22 or 23? 20, we're on 23. Read 23. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. Uh-huh. And he said to them all. This is Christ talking. So he said to them all. Read that. If any man will come after me. If you come into the truth, let him deny himself. Understand that the truth is not about you. But we do have purpose. You do have a place. You do. And let's see Christ. Let's see what Christ said where your place is. Read that. And take up his cross uh -huh. and, and follow me. And do what? And follow me. No, go before Christ. And follow me. You coming in this, in, this, in this truth, the way has already been paid for you. The price has already been paid for you. What are you doing when you don't even have no understanding that you must follow the men that was it set the course for you? Where's that coming from? You have to cast that down, brothers. And I hope and pray that it's not in here. I hope and pray. That ain't what we teach up in here. And read that again. Read, give, give me um, uh, 23. Luke chapter 9 mm -hmm. and verse 23. And he said to them all. And he said to all y'all that come into this truth. He ain't sparing nobody. This is out of the mouth of Christ. He ain't putting you before him. Let's just get to the matter. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And let him follow me. Okay, all right. He said that. Let's see what it was that Paul said concerning following Christ. Let's get 1 Corinthians 11 and 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter 11, mm -hmm. verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So even Paul himself realized that he's following Christ. Paul didn't sit there and tell you, get in front of me. He didn't tell you that. He said, no, nah, I'm following Christ. If you want to get with me, hey, follow me as, as I follow Christ. Did he tell you get in front of him? Did he say, let's just break rank? Let's just go start us a new thing. Let's just go get us another camp. Let's just go get us start us another church. There ain't but one church. You can carry it away if you want to. What Paul say? Read it from the top again. First Corinthians chapter, mm -hmm. <coughs> chapter 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. They showing us that if you follow Christ, and said, if you follow me, let him deny himself. Paul said, if you follow me as I follow Christ, they showing you what you can become in Christ. They showing you, though. They give you an example. There's a place for you. You know what this really goes into? It actually goes into being in order. If you can follow somebody, you can check your spirit. You can get your spirit right. That's right. And from that, 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 that hierarchy, that, oh, 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 that caravan of a family that I had, 
you know, I knew my place in that hierarchy. You know, I wouldn't break a rank. I had three older brothers. I wouldn't break a rank in there. Tell me, no, no, let me get up to the front. Daddy gonna get me my license this week. This is my week. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do that. So why would you do it now? That's the point. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Read on. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinance. And stay in order. And stay in order. Don't break your rank. Stay in your place. Fulfill the purpose. Fulfill your calling. And make your election sure. Read on. And keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. No, change them up. Do your own thing. I ain't got to listen to them. I told you, man, I'm making $72,000. You simple. You only talking about Esau's kingdom. What about the Most High Kingdom? What about his work? What about his order? Where are you going off at? Oh, I know. You're making it about you. It's about you. Mm. Give me, let's backtrack a little bit. Give me uh, Psalm 78 and 1. Let's go there. Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. And we're talking about leadership is a must. You've got to have leadership. When you had your parents, they led you. You believed in them. Ate a pie, got the tennis shoes, got the money for the, um, for the lunch money for school, got the driver's license. You believe in that leadership. Believe in the most high leadership. Hold that. Get 15 and 4 Romans. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh-huh, read that. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning. So these things was written for our learning. We understand the old times, or some of the old the, the, the commandments, that when we go back and look at the laws. They was written for our example. We know that. And then there's the stories of King David, King Solomon, uh, Prophet Samuel. So we have the history. And you can see that these men was all followers. And I'm going to show you, or the Bible will show you, what a follower actually is. It's going to show you exactly what a follower is. You know, I want to be a follower. I want to be a follower. When you see what a follower is, it, it's, a, it's a good place to be. Just, I just want to be a follower. I get it. I'm telling you. Um, okay, you read that? Uh, it's more. Okay, go that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay, here's the point. Drop that and I want you to go back with me to Luke 6 and 40. 6 and 40? Yes, sir. Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. Uh huh. The disciple is not above his master. Read that slow and read that again. Luke chapter 6 and uh -huh. verse 40. The disciple is not above his master. So, Christ says, follow me and deny yourself. Paul said, follow him. Christ come back and tell you again that he calls your name a disciple. In the other verse in Luke 20, uh, 9 and 23, he said that to follow him. And he's telling you what you will become. Read that again. The disciple. That's what you want to be. A follower is nothing but a disciple or a believer or one that emulates Christ. That's all it is. That's a great position to have. To do the things that Christ tells you to do is a man that's going to endure to the end. It's a man that understands leadership. It's a, it's a man that humbled himself. It's a man that's taken on humility. And let's see what it says. Read that again from the top. The disciple is not above his master. There's no need for me to sit here and understand that I'm not above those men. No more than you should have been above your mom or your daddy or your grandma. There's no need for you to be above the elders. There's no need for you to be above the deacons and the captains. There's no need. We're not saying that Most High is not raising you up, and that probably will happen in this case. But what I'm telling you, there is a place for you in this gospel, and it's the, we have to follow. 
You have to make your calling, your election sure. Read that verse again from the top. Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master. So all us brethren that's following our leadership, we're not above our leadership. No more than uh, when Paul told us, follow me as I follow Christ. No more than Christ told us to do the same thing. We're not above them, but we're to follow them. Read on. But everyone that is perfect, but everyone that understands that he is a follower, let's see what comes to him. Shall be as his master. But you're going to be as the ones that, that you've been following all along. You'll become a disciple or a follower of Christ. And that's the aim. And that's why we must have leadership. We must have leadership, brothers and sisters. So with that, 15 minutes with the captains, I'm going to say shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.